Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and today we're going to start tearing apart the front end of this 42 inch machine that Bruce brought over here from Minnesota. That was a trip. We want to get the front end stripped down and out of the rear case so it can get welded up. Now a few things I've already got loose because it's pretty typical and I didn't think it was all that difficult. But there is a couple things on here I want to point out that does not look good. Sorry Bruce. Let me move you a little closer. Right here you can see a piece of half inch steel bar. That is not factory. Somebody has added that and welded it in because apparently this either well, I can feel a weld on this broken half. So they cobbled it up instead of just buying a new part. And also over here, this side has a nylon bushing in it. And you typically cannot see them because they're under this plate between the frame. This side, however, I don't know what's going on. I haven't got it apart yet. But you can see a very large steel washer inserted between the kingpin and the frame. Now, if anything is bad in there, I'm hoping that it's the kingpin. Because I can buy one of those. Or I probably have one laying around. If the frame is bad, <laughs> that's more welding. <laughs> but I... I'm determined I'm going to fix this thing one way or another. So the first thing we want to do is we have to take the tie rods off so we can rotate the steering wheel and knock that pin out. So I've got these loose. We're just going to spin these off. You need a half inch wrench and a 7 16 open end wrench to get these off. Like I said, I've got the nuts loose already. These are not the typical tie rods that are on most of the machines. Most of the tie rods are bent and they have a cotter key through them. These have universal joints and they're held on with nuts and washers. We'll throw that one over there. Take the nut off this one. And the nut off this one. Now this frame is already drilled. Briggs and Stratton makes a kit where if you're having trouble with oversteering and your tire gets wedged in here, which some machines do, they sell a kit. And all it consists of is a spacer, which is a piece of pipe, a quarter inch bolt, a lock washer and a nut and they give you measurements where to drill this hole and I don't know if you can see that hole or not let me make you seasick there it is you put the quarter inch bolt and the piece of pipe through this way so it's sticking up you put the nut on the back and then when you steer this arm hits that and stops it from over steering and you can see it goes past but this hits on this frame. Now some machines, even though it hits on the frame, it locks up. And you cannot break it loose unless you back up. That pops it right out. But it is a nuisance and it's very easy to fix. Now to get the steering wheel off, typically <laughs> I use this piece of 2 by 6 I have it cut on an angle to match the angle on the steering wheel. And now you can rotate the steering wheel farther than typically because your tie rods are off. And in the end of the 2 by 6 I drill a hole. You can see a couple of times I missed the hole. That is to support the steering wheel while you're pounding on the roll pin. Because if you don't, all of the stress that you're trying to put into that roll pin 
is getting lost from the flex of the shaft for the steering wheel. But this one was a little, I tried to get it off or at least tried to get the pin loose before I started. And today I'm a little more winded than I typically am because I gotta buy a Sawzall. I had to use one of these things. And here's the steering wheel. And there's the end of the shaft I had to cut off. What had happened is he tried to get the pin out by drilling it. These are rolled spring steel pins that they used back then. And they are hardened. You cannot drill them with a regular drill bit. A carbide drill bit, maybe. A carbide end mill in a vise, in a, in a mill, you can get these out. And I'll have to take this to work this week. I'll put this in a vise on the mill and I'll go down through there with a solid carbide end cutting end mill. And I'll poke that pin right out of there. Well, I'm not going to push it out. It's going to cut it out. Then I can go over to the press. Done this before. You pop out your nameplate with a screwdriver. It's supposed to pop right out of there. Here we go. Then you put it in a vise this way. And I come down on there with a half inch end mill and I cut that piece of plastic off right there. That's hiding the top of the steering shaft. Then I put it in a, in a press and I support it on this, on this aluminum flange. And I press that piece of steel out. Now it's not helping you that you have a steel shaft in an aluminum insert. You get corrosion and that's a problem. So when I put this back together, I won't put the pin in the steering shaft. I'll let Bruce do that. Because if you look, these are offset and they're typically put on the machine like this, the closest side towards you. A lot of guys, there's not enough room. Long-legged me, I turned mine around. If you notice, if you take the pin out and you rotate this and put the pin back in, now the steering wheel is farther away from you. It gives you more room. So I'll let him decide how he wants that and he can pound the pin back in. Or when he comes to pick it up, we'll do it right then. Now, what do you do about the steel shaft? I could repair it. It's not that big a deal. We do this at work all the time. Here's what's left of the shaft. You got your foam rubber cover. Keeps it nice and shiny under that foam rubber. You cut this off right here underneath the foam rubber. You put this in the lathe and you drill a hole up in here. And you take a new piece of steel that's right length and you drill a hole up in there. Quarter inch, three eighths. And you put that together and I have my buddy that does the brazing at work. He silver solders that and brazes it back together. Put your sleeve over it, you'll never know it was done. But I have an easier way. I've tore three of these things apart, so we're just going to put a new shaft in there and be done with it. Now, to get this top uh, cotter key out of here, underneath this cover, that goes under on first for the foam rubber before the steering wheel. There's a cotter key up in here and you can't get to it. Well, I did once. That's because a viewer told me, hey, dummy, if you look down here, there's another cotter key. And it's about two and a half inches from this flange. So if you pull this one out first, which I've already had bent straight, 
and you pull down on the shaft, now the car key's sticking right out here in plain sight for you to get a hold of. We just gotta bend it straight and get it out of there. I can't remember who got a hold of me and told me that, but I'm always open for tips myself. I haven't been doing this that long. Now we're going to pound that thing out of there, maybe. Pull that out. We'll take off our steel washer. Sorry about getting in your face there. Then we can spin this around. I have this, in case you're wondering, a lot of guys ask me, how do you do that? I have it sitting on a piece of plywood with casters on it. Just some plain three inch casters and it really works good. Now you pull this out. And that's supposed to, I think he welded something, he welded a big washer on here too. Cause that's supposed to just pull right out of there. That's why it looks so much bigger than them. We're going to have to try to pry that out of there, I guess. Well, this could be interesting. We might have to cut that off and get that out of there. I guess we'll just leave it in there because I got the wheel off so I can get the dashboard and the other things out. So what we want to do now is we want to take this brake slash clutch cable off and you just turn that sideways and it pulls out. And we'll shove it down through this tube. And pull out the bottom. Now the next thing we got to get out of there is the wires for the ignition switch. Get that unplugged. And that's got to go through a little hole right here. That, <laughs> that should be interesting. it is. I don't know how they got that in there. Let's take a look at it here. Well, we're going to have to figure out the trick to pop them contacts out of that big plastic thing because they don't want to come out of there. Maybe if we get that cable out first for the for the speed control, that will help. Let's see, I got uh, I need a Phillips screwdriver. These are held on with a nut and a bolt, very small, takes a Phillips screwdriver. Unscrew that, it pulls right off. And we'll take the other one off. Sorry, I don't want to get in your way. Now, yep, see somebody's got that on there the wrong way. Wasn't that nice of them? They've had this part. The screws always go through from the outside, so it's easier to get your screwdriver onto them. You just love it when somebody works on something first. 
course, when I started out, I bought my first house. I said to myself, if I have to hire somebody to work on this house, they're going to have their work cut out for them because I'm going to try it first. Now, we need a Torx bit to get this little dashboard off of here. And this one's all busted up into pieces. Here's one piece. We'll put that down there. Take the other screw out. I'm going to pull the key out. Then we should be able to get this off. Yep, one more screw. Some of them only have two, some's got three. Now, yeah, see the bottom's pretty busted up on this one, but, and the top's busted. But, hey, I got three of these, too. So we ain't going to worry about that. Uh, next thing we want to do, I keep cutting right in front of you, don't I? Is take out the ignition switch, because that'll be in my way. to get everything out of here so when we do some welding we don't end up I lost my washer we don't end up melting something that we don't want to melt that's the ignition switch now we got a couple of screws here that hold in the oh, and we're stuck to the magnet. A couple screws here that holds in the throttle cable and handle. We'll take that off. And we'll spin this thing back around. Pull that out. You should be able to pull this up from the back side. And it's stuck on something. the throttle cable. This end is smashed on, crushed, so you could get that apart, but it's a lot easier just to pull it out, out this way instead of shoving it back through that way. Now we can try this. We got the cable out of our way. Now there's enough room to get the plug through for the ignition switch. Okay, I'm back. My lovely wife came and wanted to get a shovel so she could do some transplanting flowers out there that somehow came up in the wrong place. So now, I guess we better just drop you down a little bit. Hang on. We're going to pull that wire out the bottom. That was plugged into the ignition switch. And now we have everything out of the tube so we can lift it up off of there. Uh, let's see. Let's do this first. Make it a little lighter. We're going to take the tires and kingpins off. And you need a pair of snap ring pliers. We'll take this one off first. And let's see. I guess we'll pile it over here with the rest of the stuff. Let's see what that looks like. Well, 
Well, the frame looks good. Why he put that thick washer down there is beyond me. We'll try to get that off. You can see where it's been cutting into it because the lower, well, the lower bushing is there. I don't know what to, I don't know what he did that for. A lot of people will do that because once they get the kingpin in, there's a bunch of room up on the top. So when you get the snap ring on, your kingpin will snap up and down. You're supposed to build up the top with shim wash, steel shim washers, then put your snap ring on. Now these top bushings look like they might be okay, but I don't know what the bore is like. They might be shot inside. We'll take that one off and we can pull this one out. Now this kingpin's got quite a bit of wear in it. Even if I replace the bushing, um, it's still going to rattle back and forth. The hole looks good in the frame. I don't have to worry about them. I did have to rebuild one once. Now what we're going to do is take off the bolt that holds the two together. That you need a 9 16 wrench for this one. They're not all the same. And I'm going to use a 9 16 socket on my air ratchet and take that off. Now you have to wrench that all the way off because it's a nylock nut that's on there so it doesn't come loose. They had this a little tighter than it should have been because it was stopping it from flexing like it's supposed to. But I can show you maybe if you can see it. I don't know how clear this is going to be. Let me move you over here. But here's where the frame is cracked. Right here. I don't know how well you can see that. The other side you can see real good because somebody welded it I would say with a stick welder and did a terrible job. We're going to try to clean that up a little bit. Even if we have to grind all of it off and re-weld it from the inside like you should have. If you weld this, here's the crack right here. If you weld this on the inside, you never would have known it was welded. Now if I can lift this out of here. And there we go. You can see he had a couple shims snapped in there so that he would could tighten up his uh, mower belt, or I should say the mower deck belt. So the next video is going to be taking this rear end apart. That has some issues and we're going to totally rebuild the whole thing. It has bearings in the fenders and I just had a viewer get a hold of me and said I just rebuilt my machine. I rebuilt the uh, differential and the chain case. I've got it back together but how do I tighten up the locking collars on the bearings? Where are the axles supposed to be? 
Well, when I get to that point to put this back together, I'll show you how to preload the axle before you lock the locking collar on the bearing. And you want that axle in the right position because if you don't, if it's over too far, the chain on the end of the hexagon tube inside the differential will eat a slot right through the cover. So you want them preloaded like they're supposed to be before you lock down them covers. So I guess that's about it for this. Monday after work, I will take this and the mower deck down to my son-in-law's and uh, get it welded. I don't know, maybe I could wait for the weekend and take the camera and film him welding these. We'll see what he says about that. But that's it. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. I need subscribers. They're slowly climbing up there, but <clears throat> I think um, I have a app that I can go into that tells me everything about my channel. And I have 12,000, I don't know. Here's the app I can use. Tool Studio, I think is what it is. And it tells me everything about my channel. And I can go down in here and it tells me that I have if I can find the right one, 12,234 subscribers. But it also tells me that is 11.5% of the people watching this channel. So you times that by 10% and hey, I'd be doing pretty good if everybody that watches this channel and enjoys it and uses it would subscribe. A lot of people think, well, it's, it, it's expensive to subscribe. It doesn't cost you a dime. And it has the advantage of being a subscriber. You can push the little notification bell. And every time I put a video on, you will be notified that you have a new video for me to watch. A lot of times, uh, the last one I just did was on working on a stator on an engine. I left a part out of that engine, and when I got all done, I it was a little contest. See how much you were paying attention. And Larry was the first one that got a hold of me and told me, you forgot to put the screen on the top of the flywheel, and you forgot to put the cover back on the air breather. I didn't even know I left that off. <laughs> so he was paying attention. And he got that extendable pickup tool that's magnetic with a light in the end of it. I have mentioned that to Eric from Dick Dyke House. He got his hat on. He is not a supporter, but he does give me a lot of stuff. He gave me three more of those tools. So keep watching. I might make a mistake. And next time, I might not tell you that I did it. Just to see if you can catch me. So I guess we're done with this. So please subscribe, push that little bell, give me a thumbs up, that helps me too. And remember to work safe, have fun, and keep on snapping. We'll talk to you soon. So long.